Kurt. We're ready to start. Okay, wonderful. So we'll call the uh, meeting of the planning board for April 20th, 2021 to order. I'll start with uh, the roll and I'll call off names and ask you to answer present or here. Lori G. Here. John Cutler. Aye. Ed Myoshi. Oh, I'm here. Here. Christopher Tamalonis. Here. Sarah Bledsoe. Here. Craig Arco. Here. And John Eichmann, I'm here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The upcoming meeting dates are May 18th, 2021 and June 8th, 2021. We have uh, three sets of minutes to approve and hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review those. Uh, so starting with the minutes for February 16th, 2021, uh, the only two people who were not with us at that meeting were John Cutler and Christopher Tamalonis, uh, but all others were, were there. Uh, Craig, uh, we won't expect you to, to vote on the minutes. Um, so do I have a motion to accept those votes? So moved. Thank you, Lori. Second. Thank you, Ed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the second set of minutes is for March 9th, 2021. And I believe everybody was in attendance then with the exception of our new board member, Craig. Um, do I have a motion to approve those? So moved. Thank second. you, Ed. Second by Lori. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. And lastly, um, is, are the minutes for the meeting of March 30th, 2021. Um, I believe Christopher was absent that day. I think everyone else was in attendance. Could I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you, Lori. Second. Was that you, John? Second. Yes. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. Thank you. So first item on the agenda is um, Marl Crane. And tonight we'll be opening the public hearing. If there is uh, someone here to speak on behalf of Marl Crane, we'd love to hear if there have been any changes since the last time they made a presentation. Um. Hi, uh, this is Terry Hahn from LADA. Uh, we're the site planners for the project. Also on the um, uh, call uh, today is uh, Peter Jaron from Morrow, uh, if you want to uh, allow him to speak as well. Sure. I do have a presentation uh, to go through, if that works. It, it does indicate any changes, um, if, that, uh, if you want me to go through that, or you just want me to um, indicate what the specific changes are. I think if you just wanted to hit the highlights, that'd be fine. And my guess is, is if there are any questions beyond that, that uh, the board members will, will ask. Okay. Do we want to open? Uh, we, uh, we, I guess we should start by opening the public hearing. Could I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. All righty. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, is it okay if I share the screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So I just want to um, indicate uh, some of the, the changes uh, that had occurred um, specifically uh, in response to the fire um, advice, the, the fire chief and the fire advisory board. Um, they had asked for uh, a 
turnaround uh, located approximately halfway down the driveway. It's, it's about 1200 feet uh, from Lime Kiln Road uh, to the proposed building. So they had asked for a turnaround that would be suitable for the fire um, uh, trucks. And we also submitted uh, um, vehicle movement um, plans uh, that would indicate uh, how a tractor trailer and a fire truck would travel through the site and around the site as um, we would anticipate. Few other things that had changed is the um, engineers had asked for a light to be located at Lime Kiln Road, which we have added. Um, and in our process of doing the turning radius um, plan, uh, we did indicate that the uh, curve, the, the radius for the entry coming from and out of the site um, it needed to be widened up. So the existing berm that is out there, just we needed to cut that back and change the grading out at the front entrance so that that would be more suitable for vehicles coming in and out of the uh, <coughs> complex. Um, uh, other than just uh, ongoing, because of the turnaround, we had to add some additional storm drainage, uh, created a filter strip and a um, biofiltration area um, it, uh, related to the turnaround because it was some additional impervious surface. Um, the site plan uh, pretty much remains the same, uh, which is showing you know, the access road following through the uh, existing access out into the back to what is currently the cornfield. Uh, the building is 26,000 square feet, um, and that there were some uh, additional um, images that we had previously submitted uh, with respect to how the building worked. We did go to the architectural review board, and there were some changes with respect to what the building looked like, um, which we had previously submitted. Would you like to see those images as well? Sure. Okay. Please. That'd be great. All right. I think I'm gonna have to uh, go through, it'll be easier if I do it this way. I don't have to go through detail on my presentation, but it has everything in it. Um, so the, the building itself, hang on. That's a site plan. Just uh, uh, some dimensions that you can see the, where we are on Lime Kiln Road. So the building itself uh, is, is three tones. It's two tones of gray and then um, the blue, uh, which matches the Moro logo. Uh, there were some addition, there are changes that were made uh, to add a, a, a stone veneer uh, on the office component and some detail related to the office component that uh, resulted from our discussions with the architecture board. Um, and I think um, just so you can see the colors and how the building changed, and then um, the question that uh, was asked of us before um, was, what does the building look like? We did manage to cut the height of the crane down. Um, and we did that based on um, an image that will come forward. But the, the question was raised about what does the building, how does the crane and the building go together? Um, in this case, the height of the crane is based on um, being able to lift up the components, um, which are generally somewhere between 30 and 40 feet long. Um, they don't get lifted up horizontally, they get lifted up vertically, and then they get set down horizontally. So you can see the images of the different kinds of parts and how they get stacked. And therefore the crane height, this is the easiest way to see it, um, is, um, determined by how you have to have some room underneath the, the uh, um, oh, Peter, what am I, I'm forgetting the name of, of the, this, this piece of equipment here. You have rigging and then you have the crane component and then you need a good 10 foot clearance on top of the materials. And that pretty much dictates how the height of the crane is set up. Uh, so that's, that's, I think that was uh, one of the questions that were raised uh, previously. Um, in addition, uh, just uh, you guys were interested in some images of what it looks like with the between the building and the crane. So this is from the project drive um, coming up. It's it's over 750 feet away from Lime Kiln Road at this point, and this is just a side view um, from the side that faces Lime Kiln Road um, and what it would look like uh, for the building and crane relationship. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, any other things that have changed, uh, we 
address the fire advisory board. Um, the architecture review board is set. We made some minor uh, changes and then we just updated the storm drainage. I think that, that pretty much addresses those elements. Uh, are there, before we open it up for public comment or questions, um, are there any questions or comments by our board members or professionals? I, I think that it's nice that they've re reduced the height of that. I'm just wondering how tall that is in relation to the cell phone tower that's over by the department of uh, the highway department, the state highway department. Based on a, a, a general estimate, it is lower than the cell phone tower. Okay, good, good. No, because I can see that from my house. So I was hoping I wasn't going to have more than that. Thank you. Okay, uh, Michael, do we have any members of the public that are here to comment on the project? So if you're here from the public and you'd like to speak on this matter, please hit the raise your hand function. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. Uh, if not, then um, I think we will close the public hearing tonight, but keep it open for 10 days for any written comments that might be offered by anybody of the public and, uh, and put it on the agenda for a decision for the next meeting. So could I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Thank you, Lori. Second. Thank you, Ed. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, carries. Okay, the next item on the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank, um, thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. And so um, at the next meeting, um, that's that's when you're likely to do the NAG deck? Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, I appreciate that. We're just trying to uh, get our health department uh, stuff in order and uh, we'll be in front of the um, Zoning Board of Appeals as well. So yes. that's want to make sure that we have everything following properly. Michelle, let me just add, I think their submission came in late. Morris has had not had, or CPL has not had time to review the, the storm water. I don't think they've submitted a complete SWIP yet. So I think speaking about a neg deck at the next meeting might be premature at this point until we look at this SWIP. Okay, we did, we did submit a preliminary SWIP and uh, plans, drainage plans and uh, uh, erosion control plans. So I think they just haven't gotten a chance to finish their review. Okay, well, thank you everybody for helping us move this project along and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to sketch plan, Old Hickory subdivision. Michelle, could you give us a summary on this? Sure. I can actually, and I'm going to share my screen if I have the plan in front of me. Can everybody see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so Old Hickory um, subdivision is is basically just beyond the, um, this is, if you can see the arrow on my screen, this is Old Angels Hills Road and this is Old Hopewell Road. So it's just as you enter East Fishkill from Wappingers. Um, and this is an old horse farm. And the proposal is for a, a 25, well, I guess it's actually 26 lots with the, um, the uh, lot for the septic is a 26 lot subdivision, but 25 homes is proposed, cluster. And is the applicant here to speak? Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Laporta. I'm a civil engineer with Castro Associates uh, representing the applicant. And yes, um, I have um, in, in front of you, Michelle has the screen up showing our plan. Um, should I share my screen so that I could move the mouse around and kind sure. of drive through it? All right, can everybody uh, see my plan here? Not yet. We see you. It looks like it's... That's strange. Second screen. Oh, here we go. Screen two. Now, can you see me? Yes. 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 All right. Perfect. 
Cool. So, um, so, so what I did here is I, I draped it on onto Google Earth too, so we could kind of see the uh, topography of the site as well. Um, and you, you, you can see here, there's kind of a, a plateau that we're positioning the development on. Um, and down here to the left is the floodplain along the along the Sprout Creek, and we have um, a hill here on the east side of the site. So what we're proposing is a 25 lot cluster subdivision. We were um, initially kicking around a few other ideas, but this seems like um, um, the, the best way to proceed because it's um, there's a lot of environmentally sensitive areas such as the floodplain and the steep slopes that we want to stay away from. And it's a uh, we're taking advantage of the cluster development to reduce the lot size. These lots are approximately 100 by 200, so 20,000 square feet, just shy of half acre lots. Um, and we're proposing to put a community septic here uh, and a stormwater along the frontage of the road. Um, but what we're proposing to do is put kind of a horse fence around the community septic and around the uh, around the stormwater practice because this was uh, the previous use of this was a horse farm. So we're looking to preserve as much of the historical context of the site as we can um, so that when you're driving by, you'll see these kind of fields with horse fence around them. Um, I'm anticipating this could be some sort of infiltration practice. We have uh, Hoosick sand and gravel on the site. We dug a few uh, test pits and it's pretty consistent throughout the development area. So I'm, I'm assuming that this should be suitable for both the septic and the um, stormwater management. Um, is, is that area where the existing pond is now? Uh, there's an existing barn over here right now. Okay, and then to the left of that, there's a pond, I guess. Oh yeah, down here somewhere, that's over by the property line. I think it's like right where my mouse is. Um, I, I think that was a cattle pond, like a little man-made pond for when, when this was a horse farm so they can go drink down there. there. There's another one somewhere up here too, right on the edge of the property line. Um, so yeah, th this one here, you could see um, from Old Hopewell Road, you could catch a peek of this one here. So. Um, so the, the, the nice thing about this, um, uh, about doing this cluster style development is we can, um, uh, put a really nice buffer. I mean, to the, to the neighborhood over here, we have about 485 feet to the nearest structure. And I guess structure to structure, it would be even further about 600 feet, um, on the west side, we have, you know, uh, pro about 400 feet to the property line. And, and this is all town owned land over here around the Sprout Creek on, on both sides. Actually, I think the town of Wappinger owns the land on the, on the west side of the creek. And up here to the north, there's still some buffer between the, uh, the Brettview Acres Park. So uh, we're not really encroaching on, on, on any neighbors this enclave, it's, uh, it's pretty well screened. Um, I would have brought the horse fence all the way out towards the property line, but there is a, uh, th there's a nice existing tree line here that's gonna give some natural screening to this, uh, this development. So I'd like to leave as much of that intact as possible. Um, we put the main entrance at a high point so that you have the best visibility either way when you're coming in and out. Um, and I'm showing this here as an emergency access. I'm thinking of just using some sort of grass pavers here. Um, so there's a secondary access into the neighborhood and um, kind of, I guess an area to park maintenance vehicles for doing maintenance on the septic or stormwater practices here. Uh, what it does is it reduces the, uh, the length of the cul-de-sac for uh, fire protection purposes. Mm -hmm. it's, um, I believe we are somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 feet from, from the loop road. Well, from the loop road, it would be less, but if you were to take it all the way from the street, it would be close to 1,200 feet, which slightly exceeds the, the, the 1,000 feet. That's why we did the loop road, if the loop road would be acceptable to reduce the length of the cul-de-sac. Um, 
taking a quick look around at uh, at the surrounding neighborhoods. I mean, this cul-de-sac mm -hmm. here on Presidential mm -hmm. Way is, I believe, um, actually longer than this. And just looking around in East Fishkill, there's a lot of um, a, a lot of these cul-de-sacs. I mean, some of them, like this one right here, Dale Road, I believe, is over three thousand feet long. So it's um, it, it's not really doing anything that um, exceeds um, you know what it, what already exists all over the place in East Fishkill. So I'm hoping that um, having the secondary emergency access would be uh, acceptable to the fire department to, to have this length of a cul-de-sac here. Um, we all will need to go to county planning to make sure it's okay. I anticipate they won't have any issue because of the. Uh, because of the, um, the it'll, it'll be it'll be a gated emergency access, so it's, it won't be something that people are driving in and out of. Everyone will come in and out of the main access. I almost to the point of annoying. So, so those are um, that's kind of the high level um, the high level description of what we're proposing here. This is a sketch level application, so we're really just. Hoping to get some comments, some initial comments from the board. Um, one other thing I could add mm -hmm. is that I, I did speak with the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority about this, and um, it seems like it is the type of system that they would be interested in taking. Um, I was uh, involved with the Ober Creek project, which was a much uh, smaller project. I think it was 14 lot subdivision and uh, the county um, did take ownership of the, the septic, the community septic there, which is uh, just about the same exact type of system as we're proposing here. So we have, we have a pretty good feeling that we'll be able to work with the DCWWA for um, uh, taking ownership of this. Uh, uh, that would be if the town is not interested, which I believe uh, in the comment letter I received, they might not have, uh, might not have interest in taking over septic systems. So um, that's, uh, oh, and the one other thing here, this floodplain, um, some of the backyards are in the floodplain, um, trying to generally not touch it, but I'm hoping that um, with a little bit of grading, we could do a compensatory cut and fill, so there's no net change in the floodplain, and you know these folks can have uh, smooth back lawn areas. Um, and one last thing, um, one of the biggest hurdles in this project that we're um, going to going to need to overcome is that um, the DEC environmental mapper has a hit for a Blandings turtle. Um, uh, somewhere within the area. It's actually generally down the Sprout Creek corridor. So we're trying to learn more about that. Um, we don't think that it's a suitable nesting habitat because it's so uh, overgrown with thatch right now. But uh, if, it, uh, if, if the DEC were to take that opinion, we'd need to um, work out either some sort of on or offsite mitigation and look further into the feasibility of the project after, um, after vetting that out. So um, I'll open it up to questions and comments. Um, thank you again for letting us present here tonight and um, looking forward to hearing everybody's thoughts. Yeah, I guess my concern with this is I, I, I can remember, you know, coaching baseball in that Brettview Park with my kids and having games that couldn't be played because that creek was flooded over and the fields were underneath water. And I remember the water table is also very high over there. So I'd, I'd be very concerned about some of the stuff that you're putting that, along that left side of that road there. Yep, we are gonna need to have a survey done and um, and firm up the, the floodplain line. As you can see, the entire baseball park is within the floodplain. We're trying to keep the development out of it. Uh, the idea is that these folks can have uh, walkout basements uh, on their house to take advantage of the grade, but we're going to be very uh, cognizant, um, very aware, and um, make sure that we keep these houses. They'll need to have, you know, um, the floodplain certs done. We'll need to do surveys after construction and stuff to make sure that they don't need flood, flood insurance. So we're- uh, yeah, yeah, I'd almost be thinking that you'd want to put it on a slab because going down into that is, I, I see that as being a problem, but you, know, you guys know more about that than I do. We will continue our due diligence. Um, I didn't see any evidence and we did uh, test pits uh, a few, 
couple of weeks ago and I guess um, the wettest time of the year. And we didn't see any evidence of groundwater over here. It was all a well-drained sand and gravel, but the, the, I don't have the soil map there. Somewhere there is a soil line down here and it's a different type of soil in the floodplain uh, that's not as well-drained. So we're gonna be uh, well aware of that, the floodplain elevation, the soil type, the seasonal uh, groundwater levels and, and all of that. And yeah, and if it, if it does make sense that they will be slab on grade, um, if, if we're able to, um, you know, get more square footage in the house, make nicer units by doing the walkouts, then we'll, uh, we'd like to proceed that way. Michelle, can you just remind me what our code is for cul-de-sacs? So for yeah, um, actually it was a comment that Pete had. Right now the, the maximum length of a proposed subdivision road is about a thousand feet. Um, so I think from either point, of entrance, either the emergency access that comes out to be, according to Pete, about 1,200 feet. Would that um, be from either point of entrance or from where the loop connects to the cul de sac? Said, um, well, either, let me either just access point. Let me, yeah, let go me ahead, Scott. Yeah, because this is not a full access entrance onto Old Hopewell, you have that gated. It would be from the furthest point. If that was, were to be a full access entrance, uh, then in theory, you could measure it from that further point north. But as it's laid out right now, that's just a gated entrance. So that wouldn't count in your favor at this point. So that's, uh, that's a town code, not a fire code issue? Correct. Okay. The highway code. Okay, good. I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, I, I thought it was a, a fire code thing that maybe there could be a waiver or two because of, uh, I noticed there's a lot of precedent all over um, these other neighborhoods that have. So um, those are much older. Much they, pre, they predate the code, I think. And they don't have uh, our thumbprint on it. Right. Okay. Is that something that the town could consider a waiver on since it's just a minimal extension of the thousand feet? I, mean, I think we'd have to do a further review, but it might require a variant. Okay. I would just echo, I think, what Ed said there. A couple of those homes, especially towards the end of that cul-de-sac, are very, very close. It looks like they're back, they would have very minimal backyard if you can't um, do the swap like you were talking about. I don't know what that entails, but you want people to be able to enjoy their yard. Yep, we, we do, and we did talk. Uh, I did send a note to the, the town's floodplain administ administrator just um, just earlier today. So I'm hoping to start that discussion on if a comp compensatory cut and fill would be something allowable. Michelle, is the is the floodplain boundary the same as mm -hmm. or similar to a wetland boundary where the where the homeowner can't kind of mow it or plant in it or put a shed in it or do we allow any of those things, but they just may need flood insurance? So um, the, it's it's different than a wetland boundary. You are allowed to disturb it, but you can't, you're technically not supposed to put any impervious surfaces in it because you're not allowed to create any, um, you're not allowed to take away any of the, the capacity for it to absorb flood water, basically. Okay. I'll just add that I did speak to Bridget Barkley from the county and uh, did confirm a conversation regarding the county possibly taking the, uh, the on-site septic field. Again, to reiterate, the town has no uh, desire to take that over or accept any uh, future responsibility if in fact a transportation corporation were to be formed. Um, the county is in favor of uh, cluster subdivisions as explained to me. I don't know that they know all the specifics of this particular piece, but uh, my my understanding and my brief conversation was that they will entertain taking that that system. That's good. What was the sight distance on the side of the uh, horseshoe that you, you're gating off? Was that, did the sight distance not work? Is that why you're making it an emergency entrance or did you just? Um, just... It, was, it was really uh, the optimal place to put the entrance because it's a high point. Um, 
there it, it gets a little bit low down here and i didn't think this area sees more uh more of the runoff from the hill come down this way so i didn't want to uh try and put a septic in an area that was wet, even though it is still a sandy material. It's, uh, it's really the optimal location right here. And at the same time, it didn't give me the ability to do a loop to try and uh, shorten the distance and give an option for mm -hmm. emergency service vehicles to, to utilize the emergency access. Um, you know, right now, if you drive in, this is approximately where the existing driveway is. It really drops off. So you're going downhill steep as soon as you come in. Um, and when you're leaving, it's a little hard to see. But as you drive up and get onto the road, you could see pretty darn far. So I have a feeling that um, if there were improvements made to bring the grade up so that you're not dropping down into a hole right here, that your vehicle would have adequate sight distance. I just haven't, uh, haven't proved that out yet. So we could look into making this a, a permanent access. I'm not sure how the county um, public works department will feel about having two uh, drives so close to one, one another. But I'll certainly reach out and ask. Uh, Chris, the uh, the entrance from Old Hope Ball Road to the end of the coal sack, you're saying is how far? 1,200 feet? Um, I, I just measured 1,200 from the intersection. If I were to take this furthest point here, I could draw the line right now. This is just approximate. That's about 1,200 feet to the cul-de-sac. 1,263 I measured there. Thank you. So do we have any other questions or comments? Do we have, do you have a plan uh, that shows the steep slopes, Chris? Um, I do have one someplace if you, uh, it might take me a couple of minutes to find it. Let's see. I might have something in this uh, in this PDF. Now, um, you might get a peek at my townhouse layout in this presentation, but we uh, <laughs> we're not pursuing that. So, is that the front yard or backyard? <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a shot of the Sprout Creek. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we have some neat stuff. We did fly some drones to to overlook it. You could see the floodplain area down here. Um, let's see. I have an elevation map here so you can see where the topography changes and starts to climb. I have a slopes map here showing uh, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 20. And, mm -hmm. and the, the red and orange are uh, basically what you'd want to stay away from. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some spectacular views up here on the hill, but I uh, don't really want to mess around with trying to get a road up there. Uh, and then I'd be right behind these neighbors who probably wouldn't be too happy about that. Um, okay. th this one here actually filters out the steep slopes. Um, this is all GIS mapping. I used, um, well, it's the LIDAR from the New York State database, so it's not survey, but it's usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. So when you Thank arrived you. at your lot count, you removed all your your uh, steep slopes, environment, environmentally sensitive lands. I did. I had. Um, let's see. Now this was again for a different uh, project that I was pursuing, but I think this was the formula here: uh, the gross parcel area minus. Uh, I think that's wetlands and water and floodway, uh, and fifty percent of the steep slopes if uh, if they're not within the floodplain. So everything on the right hand side, that was all removed, and I I came up with around twenty five. Um, again, the GIS parcel. If you take the area of it, it's about an acre short. So, I mean, this number is give or take. It's the, the lot count will probably end up somewhere, let's say, between 23 and 27 once we have an actual survey. Okay. Let's see. 
we had a few, uh, uh, actually here's the soils. You can see this, uh, this pink here is the Husik gravelly loam. Um, and it's a hydrologic soil group A, uh, greater than 80 inches to the water table and bedrock. So it's a, a very good uh, material for, for construction, for uh, septic stormwater. Once you get over here into the purple and the floodplain, it becomes a pollen silt loam. Um, the, the depth to the water table is 18 to 25 inches in that area. So, um, and it's a hydrologic soil group BD, which I usually, to be conservative, will just call it a D when I see that in the uh, NRCS database. So yeah, once you get down here, you have high groundwater, you lose all the infiltration capabilities in the soil. Uh, and kind of the same thing once you start climbing, once you get into the steep slopes, it's a different material that also um, has restrictive features, whether it's water or rack, and it's less uh, less infiltration. So the uh, the optimal area to be is within this pink soil. Chris, let me ask you back to the back to the sewer design. Is it is it proposed that each house is going to have a pump? How, is um, this, how are you laying this out? Because it doesn't look like you're really going to be able to get gravity from one end all the way to the other, are you? Uh, it's very flat. We might be able to get gravity and have a dosing chamber at the end. I haven't uh, um, really got too far into the uh, design yet, except I did do some preliminary sizing on that septic field. So uh, using an assumed perk rate, it's about the size that I think it'll be. I haven't tried doing sewer runs to see if I'd uh, need to pump to get it over there, but I'm not. I am planning on having a, a dosing chamber at the community septic to, um, uh, to just have a, to have a dosing system once you get to a certain size, it's um, a better way to do it. So, so let me ask you the, uh, the conveyance system in, in the road, presumably, or it's gonna be in the right of way that would all be conveyed to the county, the conveyance system, as well as the septic system itself, the field itself? Um, I need to talk to, to Bridget. I'd assume that that's probably, uh, they'd probably want easements and everything constructed to DCWWA standards and to take ownership of the line. Um, but, uh, and that would make the most sense since they'll be charging the, the users, uh, the end users. So. I'll, uh, I'll need to confirm that, but that's what I anticipate. The remainder of the land that you're not developing, who, who owns that? Does that end up dedicated back to a conservancy or what, what are the plans? Well, um, that's a, a little bit up in the air right now. Um, what I'm thinking, let me get the plan back up is, um, you know, the, the area down here, it's all floodplain and it's probably environmentally sensitive to the turtle, but, um, you know, it could be something that we consider giving to the town to expand Brett View Acres Park. It's about 12 acres. You probably couldn't do much besides walking trails on it. Um, I don't think you're going to want to try and put, well, it's in the floodplain. So I, I imagine that this baseball diamond, it sounds like there's already maintenance issues, but it would kind of increase the usable frontage along the Sprout Creek for walking. Um, and the area up here on the hill, I'd, uh, I'd consider putting that into a conservation easement, um, just uh, since it's, uh, I don't know, I, I don't think it would be adequate parkland. It's kind of in between two neighborhoods and it's the side of a hill. But uh, we're very open to, to, to anything, um, you know, as long as the residents still have access and they could go walk down by the creek, that's great. Um, I think I do have a drone photo someplace in, uh, in my presentation. Let's see if I have a good one at the end. No. Well, uh, ignore everything on the left. We're not doing that. But uh, this here, this uh, image on the right, you can see here's one of the cattle ponds. Here's the other cattle pond. And there's a whole bunch of streams. So the town land, you can't really, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to walk across. I guess you could put some bridges and do some cool stuff, but I think opening up um, the, the rest of the land um, just to expand the park area, it's a little more upland. It, it is in the flood, 
it is within the the flood boundary, but it's 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 a little more open. There's less of those all those drainage things that you saw. They're kind of cutting through this area down here. Um, so maybe there could be more of like a I don't know a, a main trail with a, a little offshoots and a little wooden bridge to get up to the waterfront or something. I don't know. I'm not a landscape architect. I'll let the people who are good at that uh, tell us what that should be. But um, that's just kind of my thought. Any other questions or comments? So what happens if we're unable to, to um, get a variance for more than a thousand feet? Does that just mean you shorten this and cut out a couple houses? Um, yeah, yeah, it would. And depending how all our due diligence goes, hopefully we get the magic number of houses that'll, that'll make the thing work. But um, uh, yeah, we'd need to just sh shorten the entire thing and lose a few houses. I think the key thing is the county, uh, you know, confirming in writing that they're willing to uh, take over the septic system. Yeah, that's very important. We are also, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that we're interested in connecting to the town water main, which sits um, uh, right around here some, somewhere on Presidential Way. So we'd uh, be interested to discuss, you know, the next steps and, and seeing what we need to do to bring the water main over and bring it up and through. Uh, at 20,000 square foot lots, we could uh, either have a, um, a private septics or private water, so we could do wells with the size lot, but uh, I think the, the preferred way to go would be to connect the town water. Is there a fire water there for hydrants? Um, there's hydrants on Presidential Way. I don't know. Um, that's what we'll need to look into if the system has the capacity to uh, uh, expand and have fire protection through this subdivision. Yeah, currently Presidential Way, those are really just flushing hydrants. Uh, presidential Way currently doesn't have uh, really Got fire it. flow or fire capacity. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if you put a hydrant in that development, then you get away from that thousand foot, correct? That thousand foot restriction? There's no verbiage in our code that that correlates hydrants and uh, length of cul-de-sac. Okay. Okay, anything else? Well, thank you for your presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. I very appreciative of all the comments and look forward to uh, discussing this further in the future. Sounds good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, discussion item, Forest Tier, Eight Country Lane. So if you're um, the applicant for this, could you please raise your hand? Uh, any applicants or consultants for that? Okay, we have somebody who just raised his hand. Great. Okay, Chris, um, I promoted you, so all you have to do is unmute yourself. <clears throat> Hello. Sorry. Uh, I'm, I assumed that my that Mike Gillespie was, was here. And I'm texting him right now. I thought he'd be the one speaking. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Just give can just try my... and pull up the plan at least. Uh, sorry, just one minute here. Um, Jesus. I can share the screen and at Please. least show the subdivision. Um, 
he hasn't responded to me. Uh, I'm fairly familiar though. So what can I, uh, should I just explain what we're planning on doing? Yes, please do. Okay, so we're, we have, I just bought a 4.3 acre lot on, uh, it was six country lane when I bought it. Um, uh, we wanted to build a house for me and my wife and then to um, separate into two other lots that uh, I would either um, leave or possibly put um, uh, spec houses. Uh, he, Mike, Mike just texted me that he's trying to get on. But um, so that that was our plan. Um, Mike did the work to figure out the spaces for the, uh, the septics. Uh, I know he had to use a different uh, type than usual. I'm not sure specifications on that. This is, uh, I can't move anything. Um, what other pertinent information can I give you? So well, I, go ahead. There is a, a right of way to the north of the property that serves a house that uh, that lies behind. Is that this right here? Yep, exactly. Um, we've accounted for that, I believe. Uh, there is wetlands in the, the rear of the property. Um, Have you flagged the wetlands at all? Uh, I had a survey done. I, I don't know if the, the wetlands are completely flagged. It's, it's a really behind, the, the slope is very steep. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Um, it, it, it's not going to come into any, any of the building for sure. Are you going to have to grade or disturb any of the wetlands? No, I don't believe so. I, I don't plan on... Um, having any uh, walkouts uh, out of the back or, you know, it'll be on slab, I believe. So I think um, just for purposes of the, the lot count formula, you probably need to just um, basically delineate the wetlands and get them surveyed. Okay. And all the steep and any steep slopes that um, that would be counted in the formula. Mike, Mike will know what that is. Yeah. So has there been a preliminary calculation done or no? Yeah, I believe he did all the calculations. Um, I wish he was here to tell you about them. Uh, he said he's trying to get on. I don't understand how he cannot get on. Is it on the page there, Michelle? Usually it's... Yeah, usually I'm not sure. That. I'm not sure that the wetlands were delineated though. Um, I, I The wetland line on the, on the um, parcel access, it's... It, there's a lot of um, DC and federal wetlands like like right around here. And um, they don't technically right now extend into here, but I am I believe they may kind of extend in here, into here. And I don't know if DC would take some of this. So I just want to sort of just kind of want to know what's back here. I can gotcha. show you the um, parcel access possibly. Let me see if I can. Just give Michelle, you a while, you, while you do that, our agenda says this is one existing home. It's and... not. That was a mistake on the agenda. There's no okay. homes. Yeah. Just bear with me. I'm going to share my screen again here. So, this is the lot right here. Yes. And, and you can see that the, the wetlands sort of they, and you know, the mapping isn't perfect, um, but the floodplain extends, you know, just slightly onto the lot. So it's possible that the wetlands, the adjacent area may extend onto the lot. We would just need to know that for the sensitive land formula. A, yeah, but there is a pretty good differ, difference in elevation where the house is proposed and for instance, where that Mervis Boulevard is and that yes, uh, that's a pretty good difference in elevation. Um, yeah, I'm not so worried about it being a, an, um, an impact is related to the development of a bit, just, just in the lot count formula, lot what you have to remove, yeah. yeah. Yes. Got you. So we just, had, we just had a new caller come in at Michael Gillespie, if that's you, can you hit star nine?
Okay, I'm allowing Michael Gillespie in now. Then you need to hit star six to unmute yourself. So Michael, you hit star six to unmute yourself. Hello, hello. Yep, we can, we hear, can you. hear you, Mike. Oh. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello? We can hear you. You with me? Yes. Yep. All right. I'm sorry, folks. I'm actually over to rec, finish up a softball game, and then I tried to get on, and it's uh, giving me difficulty. But So I, I dialed in. Nobody can see me. But, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know the discussion that's transpired up until now, but uh, I assume that the, the board has an overview of actually what we're proposing. I know, Michelle, uh, the concern that I got from you was that um, there is there is a state wetland on the back side of the property. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I quick heard the issue of the, maybe the adjacent area that floated onto the property. I was out actually there uh, earlier today. Uh, I'm not particularly concerned about it because it, 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 it's, it's, I'm not a wetland expert, um, but it seems that it's very clear that uh, I don't think we have an issue here, um, but uh, for all purposeful reasons, I think we should probably get it flagged by DEC just so that way there's no issue. Uh, the subdivision, the way it's been laid out, actually is um, there's a floodplain on the back side, and we've taken that into account. Uh, it's very clear. I think there was some history relative to the property being mined in the past. So it's a, it's a very significant and, de and uh, uh, clear drop off in the back and that's where the floodplain line lies. But um, I understand the concern regarding, um, you know, the, the potential for the offsite wetland coming onto the property. Um, so, I, I, you know, is that kind of the discussion that's been held up to this point? Yes, exactly. Okay. No, not so much okay. worried about disturbance related to the houses of, of but just the yep. lot count formula. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, I, I, I think it's, you know, there, there's a, um, there, in terms of the lot count formula, I know that we actually ran the steep slopes on it as well as the, the floodplain. So I, I believe we're okay, but you know, the, the adjacent area um, would at the very least, if it actually came onto the property at all, would be in the same area as the floodplain. Um, so I don't think it would impact it that much because there is a deduction for the floodplain area as well. So, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, again, this is, this is basically a walk, uh, on the rear of the property today relative to what I saw, but, you know, we could certainly get um, someone out there and, and at the end of the day, get DEC out there to sign off on it. Uh, I know next step with this would be, you know, a public hearing, which we certainly like to do, but, um, Michelle, if you feel hesitant about that based upon the fact that there may be an encroachment on the, um, the adjacent area, um, we can, we can, we can get it done between now and the next meeting. Okay. Anyone else have any any other questions? Is everybody with me? Yep. Uh, any other any questions by anybody? Mike, is there anything anything we should be aware of that uh, we haven't talked about yet? Uh, Mike Gillespie or Mike Cunningham? Mike Mike Gillespie. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's a straightforward subdivision. Um, again, three lots. We did run the, the lot count formula on there, so I, I think we're in good shape there. Uh, you know, certainly next step would be to schedule a public hearing on it. Uh, Michelle, if you feel uncomfortable with that, then we'll get the edge of the wetland um, delineated between now and the next meeting. But I think we're pretty well covered because the wetland itself is a pretty good distance away from our property line on the rear. Right. Um, so I'm comfortable with, with uh, basically, I, I mean, I think this is the reality. If, if ultimately, if there are more wetlands than you anticipate there being, then it might have the worst case scenario would go from the three lot subdivision to a two lot subdivision, correct? Um, it would, it would. So, but, but again, I, I, I'm not worried about the wetland itself. And I think if you look at the parcel, you know, parcel access, the wetland itself is, is, you know, fairly well off the property edge. I think it's the issue of the adjacent area. 
But again, the adjacent area would also be covered by the existing floodplain, which we already taken the deduction on. Okay. Um, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. And you're not looking for a floodplain development permit because you don't have any disturbance in the floodplain, correct? No, no, we specifically stayed out of the floodplain so we wouldn't have to work with that. I know there was a comment, I think, in CPL's letter specific to, um, you know, a floodplain development permit, or at least talking to Rick, uh, Rick Witt about it, because I know he's the uh, floodplain administrator for the town. But we specifically kept everything out of that area so we wouldn't have to look for a floodplain development permit. Right, right. Okay. And Michelle, just I, I saw a note about two front yards, but I don't think from a practical standpoint. We need to be too too worried about that because you got no. I think the only the only issue with the with when you have a lot like this is that I would just um, recommend to the planning board that when if when they approve the subdivision they determine what the front yard is so that in the future we don't have a uh, you know when they if they have to come in if someone has to come in for a variance we don't have a discussion about what the front yard is because so the sense. planning board has the ability to to um, designate the front yard at the time of the subdivision approval so that's the only thing I would ask practically speaking. Um, are we then, are we are we talking about lot one? Yeah, because of Miras Boulevard or Moras Boulevard or whatever it is um, that kind of is behind uh, on, it. Uh, on the back side, yeah, I yes. that, that, I don't believe that's a town road. I think that's just a public uh, or a yeah, private way. It's it is. Not, okay. It's not paved or anything. Yeah. Which are you? And so I'm assuming you were planning on facing the houses towards Country Lane. We were, and at the end of the day. Um, because of the floodplain, we've kept all the houses, septic areas, wells, all toward country lane um, and kept it from the back. So I, at least I think we're well beyond 50 feet with every one of those homes. But um, yeah, Miris is a private road. It's not, or a private lane. I don't, I don't know the exact designation, but I don't believe it's a town road. Okay, any other questions or comments by board members or professionals? Well, great, Mike. I think you know what needs to be done and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you possibly next meeting. Okay, so the board would not be comfortable at this point relative to moving to a public hearing until the wetland delineation is, is set. Well, you offered that as a, as a possibility. Is that something you can accomplish? Yeah, I, again, I walked the property earlier today based upon, um, you know, an email that I had gotten uh, earlier from Michelle, just to kind of in my own head, again, I'm not a wetland expert, but I, I got a pretty good idea what's wet and what's not and plant species and so forth. Um, I believe it's a non-issue. So, you know, I don't want to hold up the application um, for the purposes of, you know, moving forward with a public hearing. Um, and, and again, I, I know the lockout firm, we provided that all on the plan. But again, you know, listen, if, if it, it's an extra month and you want to get that on the plan, you know, we'll certainly take care of that and get it back in for next month so we can move to a public hearing now. That's, that's the purview of the board. I mean, the end result would be going from three lots to two, right? It's not going to, it would be a less dense, less impactful Correct. change. I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't. I think it's okay. The calculation on this plan? It is. And again, it's not the wetland itself, it's the adjacent area. And and lot one, if I don't know, Michelle, if you have a copy of the map up, but there's a significant um, floodplain on the back side of that lot. So the only thing that I would be concerned with is that the adjacent area actually encumbered some of the floodplain area, but you know, you don't take a double deduction because of that, you know. Okay. Is this something, Michelle, that we're comfortable set uh, scheduling a public hearing for next meeting? Um, yeah, I don't have, I don't see any planning issues related to that. <clears throat> we just need to make sure that the lockout formula is is correct and and move forward. Okay. Very good. So, do we need to do anything other than? Uh, so I think if you guys, if it's if it's it's up to you whether or not you want to go ahead and set the public hearing for the next meeting, which I think uh, is May eighteenth. Okay. 
Jackie can confirm that. Is that the next meeting, Jackie? May 18th? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yep. So I guess let's talk about a logistical issue. I think you need 25 days prior to the next meeting. So that's pretty tight, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's 20 days, but yeah, it's, but, it, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's close. You have to turn this around pretty quickly. Okay. I mean, we can, we can certainly get the mailings out and the, uh, the signs out. Um, you know, if, is it 20 days, Jackie, or 20. 25? Oh, it's okay. 20. Well, that's, that's certainly, that opens up a little bit. So I'm, I'm comfortable with that. If it was 25, I'd say we're, we're pushing our luck here, but um, 20 actually would, would work. Okay. Yeah, it is 20. You want a motion for to set the public hearing to May 18th? Please do. So I'll take that motion from Lori. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay. Aye. Okay, Mike. Mike Gillespie. Okay. Yep, We're all yep, set. yep. Okay. I really appreciate it. My apologies for jumping out a little late, but um, um, that was a little trouble tying in or tying in. So uh, I appreciate the move tonight to the public hearing and uh, we'll, we'll see you next month. Okay. Enjoy Thank the you. game. All right. Thanks folks. Is there any other business to come before the planning board? If not, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. 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 All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>